Day Organizer is a demonstration web app for the Open University module TT284. I am Peter Thompson. This app is demonstrating some of the latest developments in HTML and CSS. Use the Chrome browser to see these in action. Some aspects may not work fully using other browsers. Note that this is not a full final product. This is a demonstration of how the different techniques and technologies can be used. It needs a lot more work before it could be used in the real world. Previous video tutorials in this series explained how each of these technologies works and how they can be coded. Study those tutorials first before you study how they work as parts of a single app. Before you can run the Day Organizer app, you need to upload this full set of files to the server. When you've done that, run the file part 6 setup database.php. This sets up the database and also creates two user accounts. The username is in user activities and we can see here that we have used able apple as one username and the password for able apple is cox orange pippin. The other user is peter21 and the password is Daisy Buttercup. Now you can log in with these two accounts. Login screen needs the username and the password, but you can leave the email empty. Log in to an existing account, and what you will see will depend on the time of day. Day Organizer is designed to help the user organize events through the day and to record significant events as the day progresses. On the left we've got Peter 21's study planner and next to it we've got Abel Apple's medical monitor. Both the same app, just with different information in the database. At 9.05 Peter 21 wants a reminder that it's their second study period of the day. They also want to note when stress levels are high. Abel Apple needs to check their blood pressure at some point. They also want to record when they're having a drink, record when they're having a meal. The action of recording when an event is started is straightforward click on a button. It reminds them on screen with the date and time. If the server is available, that information is sent to the server. But if the server is not available, then it is recorded locally within the browser and sent to the server the next time that the server becomes available. A note of feeling stressed out? Click. That's all that's required. Again, we've recorded date and time and we're reminded by the change in the screen that this has been recorded. For Able Apple, check the blood pressure. Okay, that's done. Record when I have a drink, record when I have a meal. Now, as we've been watching, note that the message to start the second study period has now disappeared. It's done automatically using the data that has been stored on the server and then stored locally in the browser. Here, we'll record having a drink and maybe record a meal. So those events are recorded. Um, we've got a Where Am I button that will help locate the user. But for the moment, that's complete. Now the next time it changes with something that needs to be done, the device will vibrate. If we now go back to look at a recording made slightly earlier in the day, we can see other changes happening. Before 8 a.m., Peter 21 had study time, but this ended with the message to get the children up. Abel Apple has nothing before 8 o'clock. Shortly after 8 a.m., Peter 21's account no longer shows the study time and no longer shows that it's time to get the children up. Abel Apple's account now shows a reminder to take two red pills and one blue pill and to record when I have a drink 
record when I have a meal. The Day Organizer app is responsive to the width of the browser window, with the menus appearing on a wider browser screen. The activity that's been logged can be displayed if we select a date. And we put a chart. The chart is also responsive to the width. It displays the events on a timeline at the time of day in which they occurred. You can see that we're displaying more information on the wider screen than on the narrower screen. It does need some work to prevent the details overwriting the timeline scale. Next, I'm going to set up a new account. I'm going to use a new username and a password and an email. When it's working, you would have to use a real email because it, that would be used to confirm the identity of the user by sending a message back to the user on that email address. And they would have to use that in order to log in, confirm they're not a robot. But we haven't got that set up yet. Create new account. Now I can log in to my new account now. And I need to remember the same password because it's been stored with a hash on the server. So it can't be recovered. And I've logged in. Now I need to set up some of the activities that I want. So each activity needs a description. Something that's going to remind me of what the task is that uh, I should be doing at the time. Perhaps I want to record how often I check the forums. Let's say we start work at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. And make this available until 22 in the, at night. Important. There's only one, so we don't need a display activity, but we could put it in as number one. And we'll add that activity. And now I've got an activity button for this, which if I click, will record when that activity took place. So each time I check the forums, if I click on this, it will record that. Let's add another activity. Put one on from 1200, 24 hour clock, so 1300. Activity description. Take a break. Put this as activity number two. Add this activity. It's no longer visible because we're past that time of day. Um, Time now is 1.21, so let's put have a drink down between 1300 and 1400. Uh, display order 3. Add that activity. And that now displays. So that will display from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. and then it'll be removed again. So in this way I can build up a list of activities that should happen at particular times of day or in the case of the check forums between an hour in the 
early morning and another hour in the late evening. So perhaps one more reminder, another activity. So a reminder to go and get some exercise from 1400 to 1600. So take a break for the afternoon. I'll mark that as important. Display order. That's activity. So that one will appear at 1400 hours, 2 p.m. Now at the moment we're just call, calling this day organizer. So let's go to our preferences and change this to anything you like. My daily routine. And if the application is running, I don't want to be disturbed between when I'm asleep. So wake time, six o'clock in the morning, sleep time. The new password is so if I wanted to change a password, I could change it here. But you do need the existing password at the moment in order to confirm that you are entitled to change your password. I'm going to refresh this because this isn't being dynamically updated with the name of my app. But if I reload it, it now says my daily routine. And it's still showing the same buttons that I had as before. It still knows that I've ticked this because that data was also saved locally. I'm going to take a break. Have a drink. Note that if you do want to look at several different accounts in this app at the same time, you need to use a different brand of browser for each one because of the local storage of data. On the left, I've got Mozilla Firefox. In the middle, I'm using Chromium. And on the right, I'm using Vivaldi. It's now 2.36 and we can see that the displays have changed. On the left, Medical Monitor has now got a reminder to take two red pills marked as urgent. Perhaps we should click on that to say we've taken them. The Study Planner is not suggesting any activities but still making a note if we're stressed out. We were last stressed out at 9.06 this morning. And my daily routine, a reminder to check forums, and now a reminder to go and get some exercise. One display that I haven't demonstrated is Where Am I? which is now integrated into this app. So, where am I? According to Vivaldi, I'm in Newport. Let's try Chromium. Where am I? And I appear to be in Newcastle under line. Where am I? And that's giving the same location. This computer doesn't have a GPS unit, so this is using the ISP location, but they're not all using the same algorithm. We've got uh, Chromium and Firefox both using one, but Vivaldi is using a different algorithm. All of them entirely wrong, but if I had a GPS, it would show the correct location.